Okay, friends, just waiting to see that we're on here. Can't really tell if we're on, but just give me one second. And I think we're on. Welcome back to another live session. It's Mike here with HighIntensityHealth.com. So excited that you were here because what we're going to talk about today is glyceroneogenesis. And this is the formation and also this, this process whereby glycerol, which as you know, is we just we're off the, the kind of the cusp of our three part video series where we talked about the hormonal uh, control points that affect fatty acid release, hormone sensitive lipase, this process of lipolysis. We talked about beta oxidation, then we talked about oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. So uh, this is video part four that I've been trying to, I, I don't know why, I think this particular video and this particular concept is so exciting, but just wanted to kind of share this with you. And I, I've been meaning to film this for a long time. And um, sometimes if I get backed up in like production, what I do is these live stream videos. So super excited that you're here. If you enjoy the content at any moment, please hit that like button. That lets me know that I should do more videos like this and nerd out a little bit. So let's talk about this paper. This is an old paper and I just have to check into my phone real quick, friends, just to make sure that we're like here and everything is uh, working out. So just give me just a half a second. Uh, okay, so we got a few of you on here. This is the latest that I've ever done a live stream uh, style video. Whew. So let's go, let's rock and roll. Let's talk about how fat is recycled. So here's kind of the punchline is 75% of the fat that you release as triglycerides from your fat cells ultimately gets resynthesized, re-esterified back into triglycerides uh, to, to be stored, which is crazy, right? So if we think about, let me just grab something. Let's just, I'm just literally grabbing like my box for my blue light blocking glasses here, my bag, okay? If this is a fat cell, imagine you have billions of fat cells. You have tons, some people have enlarged, engulfed, necrotic, uh, hypoxic fat cells. But let's just say you have a lot of fat cells, right? And you're releasing free fatty acids, okay? So that means that your triglycerides that your fat cells are storing are being released as in both as glycerol and then a bunch of free fatty acids. Those free fatty acids rejoin glycerol and get re 75% of what's released goes back into the adipocytes. Now, here's what's super interesting about that is we know that on a ketogenic diet, we tend to release a lot more fatty acids from our fat cells. And that could be part of the mechanism of action by which the ketogenic diet affects metabolism and whole body health because there seems to this this churn, this this turnover of constantly releasing fat and then potentially, you know, re-esterifying those into triglycerides and restoring those, that may be a proxy for fat cell health. And so I think this is pretty fascinating because this goes to show that you know our, our adipose tissue and i'll just share with you the study that i'm drawing this information from uh let me just pop this on right here here's a visual for some of you that are interested in some of the visuals but again 75 percent of the triglycerides that are released by way of lipolysis from adipocytes ultimately are recycled Okay, so this is the thing because, you know, in the sports and conditioning community, in the bodybuilding community, there's this whole focus on thermogenic agents. These agents that enhance lipolysis, they enhance the release of, you know, stored triglycerides from fat tissue, kind of revving up metabolic rates and revving up these release. But the thing is, you're not going to oxidize, your body's not going to oxidize those fats, those free fatty acids for fuel. 75% of what's released goes back in. So it could be just about this churn and this cycle. And this cycle is referred to as glycero, not gluconeogenesis. We've talked a lot about gluconeogenesis over the past four years on this channel. That's the process where, wherein mostly the liver will take gl uh, gl uh, glucose precursors like uh, glutamine, uh, you know, like different branch chain amino acids, uh, what we call gluconeogenic branch chain amino acids, and even take lactate, potentially in pyruvate, and convert that into sugar. It's called gluconeogenesis. What we're talking about here is glyceroneogenesis, and that's the reformation of glycerol from glucose. And here's the paper right here. It's, a, it's, a, it's an older paper. I think when I live stream, if I show you papers, they're actually backwards and upside down. So I apologize for that. Um, but the title of the paper, I'll link it below. And by the way, friends, uh, our Autophagy Enhancer Masterclass for the month of October is starting tomorrow. And so we're gonna talk a lot more about these processes, these pathways, and various practical tips that can help you enhance autophagy. It's only $79. We have two live calls and like numerous videos to help you master 
how to assess and improve and enhance autophagy. Links are below for that. Uh, but the title of this paper is called Glyceroneogenesis and the Triglyceride Fatty Acid Cycle. So basically, I think this is fascinating. Now, here's the take-home message that I want you to understand is in disease states, in cachexia, in burns, in uh, diabetes and obesity, this flux, this turnover goes down. And so that is what's interesting is like, it's not just all about the calories and the energy and energy out. It's kind of like, what's the behavior of these metabolic tissues? What's the behavior of someone's liver? What's the behavior of someone's muscle tissue? What's the behavior of someone's fat tissue? And is there healthy levels of glyceroneogenesis? So um, if I show you this guy right here, here's what's, uh, what's. let me just kind of tell you about the recycling. So, um, and by the way, when you're fasted, the recycling increases. And that's really fascinating. So, so that could be some of the benefits of fasting is like there's this, all this churn, right? So basically what you're doing is you're shaking the metabolic tree. You're shaking your adipocyte and saying, hey, fat, get out of there. So the fat's getting out, but then it's coming back in. And again, it seems that based upon this research, now here's what's fascinating. And, and this doctor, his name is uh, Dr. Jensen. What's his first name? Um, Richard Hansen, sorry, not Jensen. There is another Jensen that does a lot of this style of, research, style of research, but Richard Hansen has been publishing this work for over 40 years. But the sad part about this glyceroneogenesis field of research is it's not being widely cited by other scientists. Like, uh, not too many people think it's exciting. I don't know. Do you think this is exciting? Maybe I'm just weird and think this is cool and maybe it's just really dumb. I, I don't know. Um, I would love to know your opinion. Do you think it's exciting that your fat cells recycle energy and that when we fast, this recycling increases and it could be a sign of metabolic flexibility? And so that's really kind of what we're, you know, if we were to kind of, oh man, look at, I gotta, I gotta clear this layer because I got this big yucky thing right in my face. If we were to kind of distill down like what this channel is kind of about and and what a lot of the scientists and, and influencers and thought leaders and authors that we interview talk about, it's really striving for this notion of metabolic flexibility. And, and wherein what we're trying to do is tell our bodies uh, to use the appropriate fuel for the appropriate situation, right? So if you're sprinting, burning fat during that sprint may not be very beneficial. But if you're doing an endurance training, event, a marathon, maybe burning glucose is not going to be beneficial. You want to burn fat for fuel. And, and so what we're seeing is when individuals struggle losing body fat, balancing their blood sugar, it's largely a result of metabolic inflexibility. And there's this kind of disconnect between their body's ability to choose the right fuel to oxidize for the right circumstances and demand. And so really, that's what we're trying to get you to do on this channel, become more physically fit and exercise and in so doing, um, potentially this so-called cycle of this triglyceride fatty acid cycle, glyceroneogenesis will increase. Um, I think it's pretty fascinating. But it's another way then to also consider that uh, lactate and pyruvate can actually be back converted into making uh, you know, lipids and, and all this sort of stuff. So um, I don't know. I think it's fascinating. What are the implications? How do you measure this? I don't really know. But again, you know, one of the things that Jeff Folick is famous for kind of sharing, and this is data from his study in, in low carb, high fat, fat adapted athletes compared to high carb athletes, is in w when there's exercise induced in individuals who are fat adapted, there's a huge release of glycerol. And so as we just talked about, one of the mechanisms that's so kind of exciting about this glyceroneogenesis is this churn and this recycling. So it could be that the more fat adapted you become, the more that this cycle becomes upregulated and potentially the healthier your fat cells become. And so what we're seeing, and I should say what we're seeing is though I, Mike Mutzel, I'm doing research. I'm just interpreting the research and kind of translating it to the best of my abilities to you so that you can change your lifestyle and your diet and stress reduction and exercise patterns and all this sort of stuff. But scientists are showing that, you know, one of the organs that becomes dysfunctional in the context of obesity and also insulin resistance is the adipocytes. They become insulin resistant. They become desensitized to insulin's message and they start misbehaving. So if by chance 
through low carb, high fat dietary strategies, through exercise, through periodic fasting, uh, time restricted feeding, if by chance we can improve that insulin sensitivity of that fat cell and change the behavior of the fat cell, then maybe we, that can, that's like a big, a big rock in unearthing some of the underlying pathophysiologic abnormalities that's characteristic of obesity and type 2 diabetes. So uh, as always, super grateful that you're here, friends. If you do like this content, just hit that like button. That lets me know that I should do more videos like this. I do want to check into the feed, see how everyone is doing. I'm getting these alerts on YouTube saying my uh, live stream is bad, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, wow, so we're getting some good comments here, which is pretty fun. So I'm super grateful that you all are here. Uh, and then just a small little plug for our Autophagy Enhancer Masterclass for the month of October. We do this every month, and the goal here is there's like over 17 videos in there that dive into autophagy, and we do two live conference calls, and the first one for October starts tomorrow. So if that's of interest to you, you definitely got to check it out. And uh, let's get into some of your questions. I, I wanted to keep this a little bit short, a little sweet to the punch, um, just to kind of share with you because I, I'm, I'm, you know, I uh, want to get out there. Okay. Uh, Christine says, yo, thanks. Uh, we have Austin in the house. Austin says, I think this is really interesting. Um, must play a big role in someone whose metabolism, uh, is becoming uh, slower and requiring less energy. Yeah, potentially. I mean, I think, you know, as individuals become more metabolically inflexible, that this so-called glyceroneogenesis, and let me just clear this layer so it's not in your face, uh, is diminished. So pretty fascinating stuff. Um, Berenice says, yes, it is. Um, uh, Christoph says, yeah, it's fascinating. Um, is it in focus? Man, with these live streams, I don't know what's going on with the focus ability. So if I'm not like picture crisp and focus, I apologize. That's just kind of how these things uh, uh, work. So um, just got to work in Lake, just got to work on Lake Tap. So I'm so fortunate to catch you finally live. Uh, Scott, so Lake Taps, that's kind of near Tacoma, I, I believe. And, and uh, you're not too far away from us, which is cool, Scott. Um, Mark's here. Hello from Tampa. So we got quite a few. We got folks from China in the house. We got folks from um, uh, Gilbert, Arizona. So that's really awesome that you all are here. So Anyway, uh, this is video part four of the how fat is burned, and uh, you know, just wanted to kind of highlight this so-called glyceroneogenesis and this idea that uh, roughly 75% of the fat that our fat cells release ultimately get recycled right back into different adipocytes. And I think this is pretty fascinating because you know what we're seeing is is these tissues become stagnant, and and one of the characteristics of obesity and overweight is the fat cells become necro necrotic and they, they start to die. They become devoid of oxygen, hypoxic. And there's all these crazy events that, are, that occur. And this idea that we can affect the behavior of our fat tissue um, in a fasted state. And, and when our body needs a lot of energy, like for example, like potentially during exercise, potentially uh, during, you know, this paper talks about in burn victims, this glyceroneogenesis uh, free fatty acid triglyceride cycle is diminished. Also, um, it changes when leptin is administered as well. So leptin gets in here, and I, I don't know exactly how all that sort of, sort of stuff works, but I think this is pretty fascinating. So um, yeah, just wanted to hop on here. Let's see if there's any other additional you know, compelling questions that we need to get to and everything along those lines. And uh, hey there from Missouri. Um, uh, yeah. Hey, thanks for being here. 80s nostalgia guy. I, I see you on here a lot. We have someone here from Kenya, Africa. Oh my gosh. Uh, Pastor Timothy, that is so amazing. Someone from, uh, we have Josiah from Perth, Australia, someone from Houston, Texas. Um, man, that's, that's really, really cool. Um, so KJ says, uh, can cat turn into muscle long-term? And I think he meant fat. No. So there, you know, th there isn't this like tissue interconversion, you know, a lot of people kind of talk about this in body comp recompositioning that like, you know, you can convert, you know, fat to muscle and muscle to fat. It's not really, you know, it doesn't really work like that. Uh, in fact, once you, from the all, from all that I've read about fat cell or adipocyte biology is, you know, once you have fat cells, you can't really get rid of them. Um, so it's kind of crazy, right? And as people are gaining weight, they're gaining millions of new fat cells every day. It's crazy because what happens is these fat cells become engulfed and uh, overfilled 
And then the, there's all these stem cells that increase, and these stem cells are creating more and more fat tissue. So, um, yeah, the challenge is what we want to do is make sure that our fat tissue, by way of exercise and compressing our feeding window and eating healthy and honoring our body's circadian rhythms and microbiome health and yada, 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 that we, we want to improve the insulin sensitivity of our fat cells. That's kind of what we want to do. And uh, studies show that just a few weeks of regular exercise, you can change the biology of your fat tissue. Um, there hasn't been a lot of studies, at least that I've seen, I'm sure there is, on the ketogenic diet and specifically how uh, ketogenic diet changes uh, adipocyte biology. But we know that you know one of the best ways to affect your fat cells is through fasting. So um, that's my go-to go -to way to uh, help people impact their fat cell biology. So anyway, friends, super grateful that you were here. I know this video was kind of short, yeah, a little random, you know, talking about how fat cells recycle, you know, stuff that they release. But I think it's important again because you know so many of the over-the-counter thermogenic agents are focusing on like releasing fat, burning fat. But the reality is, is like you're you're only gonna oxidize like 25% of the fat that you release from your fat cells. A lot of that is being recycled, so it's crazy. So again, maybe we don't focus so much on burning fat so much as just improving the whole process in the system so that there's just you know, normal functionality. And even in newborn babies, 74% of the fat that they release is eventually recycled back into their fat tissue. So maybe we focus too much on like fat oxidation and not enough on like just health of the of the system. Like what does the system need to function properly, right? Um, instead of always like burning fat for fuel and this and that. And I'm not saying burning fat's bad at all, but I'm just saying that there's, there's more going on than we fully understand and appreciate. And this guy, uh, Dr. Hansen, has been talking about this forever, and and uh, no one seems to give a crap. <laughs> it's crazy. So, thanks for spreading the word. You know, if if you think someone that you know would benefit from this, you can always share this video with them. I'll be following the comments below. And uh, if you have ideas for our next series, I'd love to know like what's of interest to you. I have an idea about talking about NAD to NADH ratios and the so-called sirtuins and FOXO and various longevity pathways, but if that's not of interest to you, I would love to know what you would want you know, to talk about on the next series. So um, as always, very honored, very grateful that you're here. If you want to take a deep dive into autophagy and learn new cutting edge ways to enhance autophagy in your life, definitely tune in tomorrow. We got a, a webinar for our paid members over at courses.highintensityhealth.com. That's going to be an awesome series. And friends, have a good evening or good day wherever you are in the world. Our Kenya friends, our folks in Africa, so grateful that you're here, and we'll catch you on the next one. See you later, guys and gals.